In 1998, a storm swept away South African town. It was devastating, with thousands of people losing their homes and a few people even losing their lives. When the storm ended, it was time to rebuild. However, some of the people who lived in the Pongolo and Ingwavuma areas of South Africa didn't believe that the storm was completely natural. Instead, they believed that a supernatural force was responsible for it. One that has existed for thousands of years, and one that some see as a god, but others see as a monster. This is the legend of the Inkanyamba, a being so powerful that people are afraid to even say its name. The legend of the Inkanyamba comes from cave paintings found within the region of KwaZulu Natal. Although we cannot realistically date when these paintings were made, some believe that it goes back thousands of years. While the Inkanyamba could just have been painted from the imagination of someone who was alive thousands of years ago, I, like many others, believe that there is a strong chance that these paintings were inspired by a real creature. After all, it is possible that they could have drawn what they saw. While many of the old legends have died out, the legend of the Inkanyamba is one that is very much alive today, with there even being a general location of where the creature lives. The Inkanyamba is believed to live in the Howick Falls, fairly close to Peter Maritzburg. Locals are terrified of the creature because of its perceived power, which may be why many people do not try to track it down. The Inkanyamba is believed to be able to kill you just by looking into its eyes, which is why many say that if there is a storm around, you should not look into the sky, or you could be struck dead on the spot. Others claim that just by saying its name, you could attract the Inkanyamba towards you, which may be why it's forbidden to talk about it. It's also forbidden to create accurate drawings or statues of the creature, which is why most artist depictions of it have some inconsistencies from the legend. However, while most stories of the Inkanyamba come from the KwaZulu Natal area, this is not the only place it's been spotted. It's claimed that the Inkanyamba isn't just one creature from a time forgotten, it's actually a part of an entire species. When the time is right, the Inkanyamba takes flight, creating a large storm that follows it wherever it goes. However, it's not just flying around aimlessly. The Inkanyamba is actually looking for a partner to mate with. While we don't know if there's an abundance of Inkanyambas out there, or if it's an endangered species, we do know that there are others, at least according to the legend. The others are said to live in caves or near large bodies of water, with anyone who enters their territory being torn apart and only pieces of their bodies being found. In 1996, two major controversies surrounding the Inkanyamba began. The first started when a local newspaper held a competition. That competition would reward anyone who could find photographic proof that the Inkanyamba existed. While a number of images were submitted, only two were published. The authenticity of these images are highly questioned. One of the images shows the Inkanyamba near a waterfall with its head extended. The part of its body that is extended is almost as high as half of the waterfall. The second controversy began when rumors started to spread that the South African government wanted to capture the Inkanyamba. According to these rumors, they wanted to place the creature into a safe place, like a habitat. Locals believed that trying to capture the creature would anger it and cause it to retaliate against the areas around it. The plans to capture the creature have since been scrapped. While the Inkanyamba is a South African legend, legends similar to it exist all over the world. Almost every culture believes in some kind of dragon or sea monster which opens up a question. Do people believe these kinds of legends simply because they are interesting? Or have they actually seen these creatures? It seems like too much of a coincidence that the description of the Inkanyamba 
almost exactly matches the description of a Chinese dragon. Almost like they're the exact same creature. Regardless of what you may believe, the fact that these legends exist all over the world may add some authenticity to the claims of the Inkanyamba. While everything I've said so far may make it seem like a monster, not everyone believes this. There are some who see the Inkanyamba as a god. There are some who believe that the Inkanyamba brings rain to villagers and farmers during the dry seasons. Others believe that the Inkanyamba can destroy their enemies for them. In these cultures, the Inkanyamba is approached with gifts by the most holy spiritual healers, who then ask it to do their bidding for them. While you may choose to agree or disagree with these actions, it does provide a solid connection between humans and the Inkanyamba. The Inkanyamba is a complex being with a lot of stories and legends surrounding it. While I have covered some of those in this video, it still isn't the tip of the iceberg. So do you want me to continue with this deep dive into the Inkanyamba? Tell me in the comment section and subscribe for more videos.